Greetings, everyone. It's almost noontime here in the Philippines. I'm doing this uh, next video here on uh, Proxmox storage. I was kind of surprised when I uh, it was a couple days ago when I took a look at my uh, YouTube account and I saw like two plus K views of my, uh, I guess, for why Proxmox. That was a total shocker to me. I must have hit the keywords or something just right. But it threw all my metrics off and uh, I don't think a lot of people actually got the idea behind that video, but that's okay. I'll be uh, doing this one, and uh, like I say, this one's on uh, storage on Proxmox, and it'll highlight another thing I find that Proxmox could have done better. But, yeah, I mean, storage is okay. It works. You got two options, but we'll get to that in the video, okay? So as I said, this is going to be on storage on Proxmox, and I've got my uh, cluster set up was from the last couple of videos, and I've got the uh, two nodes, Tartarus, Lyceum. My laptop would stop shaking. Okay. Got a little wind blowing. I'm hanging out here in the carport because the weather's so nice. It's sunny, and the wind hasn't been too bad, although as soon as I start recording, it picks up, but oh well. Anyway... So Proxmox, and I'm gonna, what I'm going to be doing is uh, going over the uh, local stories that was built by default when I installed Proxmox on both uh, the Lyceum and Tartarus. Uh, I'm going to talk about a little, then I'm going to talk about using the GUI to uh, create additional storage with another uh, drive. And both uh, computers, I have a one terabyte solid state drive. One's in the uh, SATA drive, the other one's got an NVMe drive. But like I said, I'm going to be discussing it. We'll be looking at some of this stuff and uh, one of the things I'm going to format the uh, drive for the on uh, Elysium because that's going to be where I'm going to build my file server. I'm not going to need to really format the drive on uh, Tartarus right away, but I think I'm going to save that for a later video and I'll actually try the command line options in Proxmox to format it. And I'll discuss that a little more later in the video, what the difference is. But like I say, for now, we're just going to uh, look at the storage that's there. We're going to add an additional drive, and then we'll discuss things. So stay with us. Okay, we're here in the Proxbox interface. Uh, forgive the change in location. Should have checked the weather. It got bad pretty quickly. It's now raining outside. Yeah, that's the brakes. Anyways, I'm back upstairs. So we're going to go to our data center here and scroll down and take a look at what the uh, drive storage looks like. And you can see that right here. We've got 412 gigabytes of drive storage. This is between Elysium and Tartarus, between the two nodes. Uh, it's The math doesn't actually add up too well, so we're going to, have to let's take a look at where it's actually coming from, the number that is. So if we look at Elysium, it says we have 71.24 gigabytes of hard drive space. That must be directory type space. This is 72 gigabytes. Yeah, that must also be directory type space and not LVM space or LVM thin client space. Oh, hold on here. Yeah, our LVM thin clients, 147 and it was 150 something in the other one. Math still doesn't work, but okay. Okay, let's take a look at the shell. And okay, we can see our SDA unallocated, and we can see we've got three partitions on our NVMe drive on the Lyceum. And in fact, we can see we've got LVM partitions in the uh, third partition group. Uh, let's go look at Tartarus. And we can see our second NVMe drive is not formatted. And we've got the same sort of setup. We've got three partitions on the smaller storage drive. Uh, one of them is pretty small at the beginning. And then we've got our boot slash EFI partition. Then our third partition has swap, has rest for file system, 
and has LVM patch thin, thin clients. So that closer, not exact, but it's closer to this number. I should probably, if I was going to double verify this, I'd get a calculator out and calculate it, but eh. You also notice we're using GIB here, which is different than uh, GB. That's a subject for another video. I think I actually did an article on that way back when. Okay, let's take a closer look at what we got for storage. This will be a graphical representation here. Not counting the unformatted drives yet. That's at a later date. Or actually, later time in this video, not a later date. So here we can see our 250 gigabyte primary drive. At the beginning, we have NVMe 0N1P1, which is very tiny, about 1,007. It's tiny, OK? Let's just call it that. I, I'm i not overly familiar with LVM at this point. I probably need to study the uh, whole process. I've used it a few times in the past, so I know the commands. But I believe I remember something about a alignment sector when you're creating an LVM drive to uh, align it properly on the hard drive. I'll have to go back and look at that. I think that that's what this first one is. I may be wrong. Then we have our one gigabyte, basically partition two, which was our boot EFI file. And then we have the LVM partition. Now the LVM partition has multiple partitions within it. It's got a we'll see our swaps about eight gigabytes or roots, I think 60 some gigabytes. Then we've got PVE data, T meta, and PVE data, T data. This is our uh, LVM thin directory. And then we got some free space at the end. So Proxmox GUI can only manipulate blank prepared drives. And that's, well, not exactly true. They have to be formatted as GPT, but they have to be blank. No, no existing partitions. And again, this is through the GUI. I haven't really played around with the command line yet. Any combination of partitions or mixing types needs to be done through the command line. At least that's my observation at this point, as I was not able to do it through the GUI. I tried a number of scenarios, and none of them allowed me to create mixed a drive with partitions of mixed type. In fact, none of them allow me to create partitions. For my current setup, I will not be using ZFS or BTRFS file system. This is a simple setup. I've got a single storage data storage drive I'll be using, the one terabyte for my file server. Uh, I do regular backups, so I don't think I really need the ZFS, BTRFS. Uh, the LVM thin I'm using supposedly has backup options. I also will be creating a backup server to uh, save everything too. So initially on the Lyceum, I'll be setting up the second drive as an LVM thin to hold data, to hold the data drive for the uh, file server. This is going to take up that whole drive. So I'm giving basically a terabyte for data. That might sound small to some people for a data server, but it'll meet my needs in this case. Well, for a file server, that might sound small, but it meets my needs in this case. Backups can be saved via the backup server, which I'll be creating after this. And it's going to have some SMB shares across network to external USB drives. I'll go through this and how I do that in my next video. I'll be using a dual hard drive dock to have my uh, backup drives in and connected. Uh, I would have used it through my router, but it doesn't recognize a dual hard drive as two hard drives. so. It does have a USB port and it's FTP though. On my second uh, node, Tartarus, uh, the secondary drive will not be initially needed because I'm only gonna be doing a catching DNS server and a gaming server there. So I'm gonna leave it unused for the moment. Uh, available for experimentation later on though. I think I mentioned that I wanna do some testing of command line options here. So yeah, I will try manually formatting that drive through the command line. And I want to try and build a similar structure to what I saw on the install drive and having a mixed with a uh, directory partition and LVM thin partition. Well, we're going to see how that goes in the future, but it's a, it's a project. So side note, if I was using Pocket, I probably would not be using LVM at all since I found it very easy to uh, set things up in a standard directory structure. However, there do appear to be some advantages to LVM thin, like I say, with the snapshots and the backups and things, but that's stuff I'll probably be getting into more later. 
All right, let's get down to it. So we'll go to Elysium, and we want to go down to disks, and we can find our SDA disk, and we want to make sure, if you want to make sure it's clean, you can hit wipe disk. Then you want to initialize it with a GPT partition to even use it. And let's just jump back up here to storage since there's this stuff here. And when I want to check this out, if I want to add an LVM thin, a drive is not available, not wiped, not initialized. So it's not available here. Interesting. OK. So we'll jump back to Elysium. We'll select our drive. And we'll initialize it, which will take a few seconds to do. OK, now we'll try and add it again. And oh, it's still not there. OK, that's interesting. Supposedly, it's initialized. It should be there. At least I thought it should be. I'm probably wrong here. OK. So jump back down to Elysium. Let's go ahead and try and create our uh, thin pool. OK, we SDA selected. Let's give it a name here. Let's call it storage SATA or local SATA, hmm. which sounds better. And this is likely to take a few minutes. It's not only, uh, well, it's basically creating a disk wide partition that's set up as LVM thin. I can really imagine how long this might take on really large drives. Coffee time. Still waiting. I should probably fast forward through this. As this is boring. There we go, done. Okay, so we have our local SATA as well as our original data. And it's shown up here under Elysium. 980 gigabytes. Oh, I don't have to add it here. Now it shows up. Okay, that's interesting. Everything is all nice and filled out. Okay. So I guess we have to define the drives at the node level then. I'm not sure what the purpose of the storage one is unless it's, if you manually define a drive with a bunch of empty partitions. I'll, that's something I'm going to have to experiment with, with later. OK. So now I can't create a directory because I have no usable drives. There's no empty drive sitting there. I mean, admittedly, this one's full. I can try the same one on Tartarus where it's not full. But yeah, no disk image available. So yeah, the disk has to be, well, ZFS is a little different kettle of fish here, but still no disks. So disks have to be GPT formatted with no partitions of any sort on them yet. At least that's what I'm seeing here. Let's go ahead and take a look at it again. Now we can see that we've got the similar setup on SDA as we had in the third partition of NVM, the NVMe drive for the uh, LVM thin directory, except we don't have that teeny beginning partition. I'm going to have to try and later date format Tartarus's second drive as strictly LVM and see if that shows up. OK, We're, we've got it, I think. All right, that's about it for this video. Kind of disappointed I had to move inside, but the weather is the weather. You can probably hear the raindrops on the roof. The wind blowing is what it is. Anyway, in this video, we uh, did the storage. We created our storage for our 
file server, which we're going to create in the next video. And we discussed a little bit about the default setup that Proxmox uses when it's installed and the storage it creates. And we also played around with some of the options for setting up storage. Uh, again, one thing I noted, it seems to be from the GUI, you can only work on full drives. I'm not sure this is 100% true yet, but that's what it looks like for my initial work. I'll keep looking into this, see what I can figure out. I've got the Tartarus node left with an unformatted drive to experiment with a little bit. So other thing I need to really look at and I might or might not do a video on later is using the command line to create drives in Proxmox because apparently you can do that too. So anyway, this is a short video. That's good. Not too long. So we hope you'll uh, all join us uh, next time around when we actually build some, start building some uh, servers under Proxmox, some virtual machine servers actually. Okay, I'll see you then.